I have a question for you. When you walk up and start talking to a girl, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? Is it something positive or something negative? If it's something negative, you're probably screwing yourself over before you even start. I see so many guys that go out there and they practice and they walk up to a girl and they're already braced for the jacket like, oh God, here it comes, ah! The very fact that you're bracing for it shows an expectancy of a negative outcome. And guess what? She can see that too. If she sees that you expect a negative outcome, she'll probably give you one. It's that old quote they say, if you think you can, you're right. If you think you can't, you're right. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you believe that you are going to get a bad reaction, you can do so many things technically right and you will get a bad reaction. If you believe you're gonna get a good reaction, you can do a lot of things technically wrong and you'll get a good reaction. Think of all the guys who have never learned any game. They never learned an opener. They never learned what to do off the open. They never learned storytelling formally, but they've just gotten good social feedback in their lives and they can walk straight up and talk to a girl. It's not because they're doing so many things right. It's because they're, they're not doing one specific thing wrong, which is they're not anticipating a negative. In fact, if anything, they're anticipating a positive and the girl can tell. And this isn't some woo woo, like, you know, power of positive thinking shit. Here's what I actually mean by that. I mean that it's coming through in your body language. I mean that your eye contact changes when you expect a negative reaction. Your body language, your tone of voice, change when you expect a negative reaction. The words you use change when you expect a negative reaction. If you're bracing to try and keep it from being bad, you're going to make it bad. Whereas on the other hand, if you're just putting it out there and you expect something positive, you usually get something positive. Hi. Sorry. Sorry, you looked uh, so like European and elegant. Oh, really? Oh, oh that's yes. so weird. And then you had the most American accent possible. No, I know. Somebody literally You're just like came mid up to what me. are you Midwest? Like no, where are you I'm from? South from oh, All right, there you go. <laughs> Somebody literally was like said that a second ago. They were like, "Oh, we're having this European thing." And I was like, "Spoke." And he was like, "You're He's like, not I'll never, uh, yeah. European." <laughs> no, I, absolutely not even. What is Sorry, what is your name? I'm Sorry. Very nice to I'm meet a you. little shocked. <laughs> but uh, not in a bad way. That's good. Here are some thoughts you might have when you walk up. Oh God, I hope she doesn't embarrass me. If you have that thought, you're probably screwed. I hope she likes me. If you have that thought, you're probably screwed. I don't really want to interrupt her. If you have that thought, you're probably screwed. If you have the thought, wow, this is going to be fun, you're probably going to do a lot better. If you have the thought of, wow, she's so lucky I'm talking to her, you're probably going to do just great. If you have the thought that like people are social and it's normal to talk to people, you're probably gonna do fine. But those things are gonna make such a big difference. And let me tell you a story to kind of illustrate the severity of this point. So my first time in London, I was teaching a program there in Leicester Square. And the thing with Leicester Square is everybody's walking through, so it's all moving interactions. And I know technically how to do a moving set. I know about distance and spacing and voice and how to plant your feet. I know all the technical stuff. But it just so happened that it was one of my first boot camps, so I was very nervous, and I got a few bad blowouts right at the start. Just, you know, probably out of nervousness. Maybe they, it was just like randomly bad luck with the girls I walked up to. But for that reason, I got this like sort of premonition that in Leicester Square I was having trouble top, stopping sets. So after that, I tried to stop three or four more, and just they would not stop for me at all. So now here I am trying to run a boot camp, and we're doing moving sets, and I can't stop a set because in my mind, I had this mental hurdle. So what I actually did to overcome it was I actually, um, there are these guys promoting in Leicester Square. I went up and I would actually go to the promoter sets and steal the girls from the promoters because I had such a mental block about moving sets that particular night that it was actually easier for me to go steal the girl from another guy than it was to deal with the moving set. Next day, you know, I slept on it, got my confidence back, did a couple practice sets, and then I could do moving sets again. There was nothing technically wrong. My technique was fine. All my angles of approach, all my volume, all the things I was saying was fine but I was expecting a bad response. And that factor alone made me get bad response after bad response after bad response. So I want to tell you this because I see so many guys go out there and just bang their heads against the wall. And they think they have to like take their medicine. They're like, oh, let me go take, I have to take like a thousand rejections, then I'll be good. No, if you take a thousand rejections, you'll probably get worse because you're just going to expect the rejection more and more and more strongly. You need to convince yourself that you're offering value and you deserve a good response. Now, this could be a little difficult if you haven't had a lot of good responses. If that is the case, what I would say is lower your threshold for positive success, right? Positive success does not mean getting a number. Positive success does not mean taking the girl home. It maybe just means 
getting a hello and a positive reaction, take that as a positive, take that as an encouraging sign and use that as, as sort of like, um, as fuel for the fact that your next set can be good on top of it, okay? So instead of finding the negative in the set and taking it as a negative and waiting for the next negative, instead find that tiny little positive, that tiny little bit of progress, take it as a positive and anticipate and enjoy that next little bit of positive. Because I can tell you when I started in this, I was very, very bad. I got a lot of negative responses and not a lot of positives, but the little positives I got, I loved. Because once I knew that I could get a five second conversation consistently, I was really happy because I hadn't been able to do that before. And once I get a 30 second conversation, I was really happy because I couldn't get that before. And I treated that as a victory. And so a lot of guys would have had that progression treated as a series of failures. I treat it as a series of victories. And I got that antici anticipation of victory and positive outcome. And that's carried me through to this very day. So I'm gonna ask you again, when you walk up to the girl, are you expecting a positive or expecting a negative? You need to find a way to be expecting a positive because it will make a material difference in your results. Oh, 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 oh,